if you'll remember when we first started this I said there's two questions you should be able to answer the first one is can you handle yourself in a crisis or a disaster in an emergency and number two can you spend the night outside maybe even more than one night outside safely so in that first lesson we took a big jump into gear and that definitely helps but let me share this with you i've spent 30 days living out in a wilderness like this with nothing other than a knife and i did it twice so you don't have to have all that fancy gear what you need is an array of four different things and I'm going to work on those with you now. And this is a very important discussion as we continue to move forward. Those four things are mindset, skills, tactics, and then gear. So the first thing we're going to talk about is mindset. Now that we know that all that gear that's essential to us, how do we utilize that gear with proper mindset to make sure that we stay alive and we take care of ourselves? Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we know what our skill level is and know what our needs are as it relates to taking care of ourselves in crisis or in an unexpected night outside. The first thing we need to do is no matter what kind of crisis that we find ourselves in, how do we know what to do? Because right now, most of us just don't. We don't know what to do if there's a pandemic like we've been dealing with, if we're caught in a fishing trip where we get lost or a hiking trip where we get lost. What happens if we get caught out in a snowstorm at some point in time and we're hiking and boom, snow comes on us, what do we do? Well, the first thing that we need to do is understand an acronym and what that acronym is is STOPA. Stop, think, observe, plan, and actively stay alive. Here's what I mean by that. When we get excited, when we get stressed out, whether we're in a fight, whether we get lost, or whether we're in a car wreck, there's a lot of things that happen to our bodies. Our blood pressure rises, we have an increase in our heart rate, we have all sorts of physiological things that happen to our bodies. And the best way to calm those back down is to literally stop and sit down. That's why I've sat down next to this tree to give you an example. If I was all excited and all of a sudden I just wanted to calm back down one of the best things I can do is just stop what I'm doing that's the S in stopa T is in think you think about what you have in your pockets what you have if you have a pack on you what kind of things do you have that you could utilize to affect your survival that's why we went over those essential gear items first that way you know what sort of things you could put in your pockets what kind of things that you should put in your pack that way you're taken well care of for survival and disaster when you think about the things that you do have in your pack or your pockets or car or wherever it is that you find yourself, what you're then going to realize is that you're probably missing something because not all of us carry everything around us at all times. That's what the O in STOPA represents. That means observe. So what I'm then going to do is observe my surroundings and see what I can take from the environment to affect my survival. P is make a plan. Literally, make a plan. Think about how you're going to do this, how you're going to do that. Make a plan to affect your survival, and that includes talking to others that are with you. If there's people with you, then you need to communicate. This is what we're going to do. That way, everybody's on the same page, and you know what to do together. If that's you and your buddies, or if that's you and your family, if you're a kid and your parents have never studied survival, you need to tell your parents this. If you're a parent and you have kids, you need to work through this with your kids. Either way, you need to be the one that can help somebody develop a plan. And then A is actively stay alive right here. There's a lot of things that you can do in your head, and I'll get to those in just a moment, but we need to do something that helps us stay alive no matter what the situation is, no matter how hard it is, how rough it is, there's some things that we need to do in our head to make sure that we continue to stay alive. Once we've done that, we need to know what our priorities are. And those priorities are important because you're probably like me and you see people around you when there's some sort of weather related event, everybody goes to the grocery store and buys bread and milk or some variation of it. That's probably one of the last things you need to be doing for a survival situation. What you need to know is your priorities in order. Okay, and I like to utilize the law of threes as a way of telling us and informing us what we need to know. You can't live more than three minutes without blood flow and oxygen flow. You can't live more than three hours without maintaining your core body temperature. You can't live more than three days without water. You can't live more than three weeks without food. 
You can't live more than three months without human assistance. That's why I'm a big fan, three minutes, you can't live without blood flow and oxygen flow, of studying first aid, American Heart Association, Red Cross, National Security Council, Stop the Bleed. These are all organizations that teach either first aid or trauma medicine. You need to get that training. That's absolutely vital. We're going to do a little bit of first aid in one of the lessons here, but it, it is imperative that you get some sort of first aid training. It's probably one of the most useful classes you can take. Get some fundamental understanding. You can't live more than three hours without maintaining your core body temp. That's where we got to have the proper clothing on, maintain our core body temperature. We got to know how to build shelters, whether we're stuck at home and we've lost power. We need to make sure we know how to stay warm. Or if we're in a wilderness event, what kind of things can we take with us, like the garbage bag that we've already talked about to affect our survival. Also, that's going to include, and we're going to have a whole lot of lessons on this, and studying on how to build a fire in the wilderness. So that way you know you have the skills to go out, source materials from the outdoors, and build a bomb-proof fire that's gonna take care of you and your needs. You can't live more than three days without water. Hey, we've already talked about carrying water with us every time we go out. We also need to know how to source water and get the cleanest water we can when we're out here. And definitely I'm gonna show you some filter devices that are very inexpensive and very easy to use so that you can get one anytime you want to go into a wilderness it probably is worth your effort to get that piece of equipment and take it with you three weeks without food i'm going to have a lesson on edible medicinal plants how to forage for food out here how to eat weeds and all the things that go along with it there's a lot of nutrition some of them are okay with taste some of them are fantastic in taste so we'll be taking a look at that as well as what sort of things you can pack to take with you to utilize and affect caloric expenditure make sure that you get plenty of calories in your body because you're going to be burning calories you need to make those up and then three months without human assistance one of the things we're going to talk about is our ability to communicate effectively how to lead others whether you're a young person you're leading your parents or you're a you're a parent and you're leading kids whatever it is i want you to be a good leader i want you to be strong i want you to have confidence the last thing I want to make sure that we go over here is what kind of things can we do to bulletproof our mind? So we'll discuss that next. Two things that we need to do is we need to prepare our bodies and our minds for survival. We're going to take a look at some strategies for each, some things that you can be doing now. These are not things you need to be doing after you find yourself in a survival event or you're stuck outside and you have to spend the night outside these are things that you can start doing now so that your body and your mind are prepared for it as far as our bodies are concerned there's four things that we need to focus on so that we can prepare our bodies for survival endurance strength balance and mobility let's talk about each endurance is one of those things where you get into some sort of physical activity and when you feel like you're getting tired, you just keep going, <laughs> no matter what it is. One of the best ways to do this is to play sports. But if you don't wanna play sports, there's all kinds of ways you can do this. One of the ways that I did it was hiking. I loved to hike. I loved to run when I was younger. <laughs> I loved to walk. I loved to get out and just move. I did a lot of farm work, so that was a way that I developed endurance. If there was a time to pick up hay bales, and I felt like I was tired and I couldn't pick up hay bales anymore. Well, I look out in front of me, there's another hundred hay bales and I've got to pick them up anyway. Or if I'm playing sports and I'm just too tired and I don't feel like tackling anybody else, well, then I'm gonna go out there and tackle somebody else. I'm gonna do it. That builds endurance. The best way to build endurance is to get out and do stuff and your body will want to just stop. You'll get tired and you've, you must pick yourself back up and continue on. The next is strength. And one of the best ways to build strength is weight training, obviously, but you don't have to lift weights to be able to do it. You can do it with just body weight exercises. Planks are a good one. The dreaded burpee. Man, oh man. Nobody likes burpees, but everybody's body wants burpees because it's really good for your strength and endurance at the same time. Balance. It's one of these things that you can walk around and stand on one leg. Stop. When you stop on that one leg, are you stable? Or are you wobbling around? So one of the things that we used to do in martial arts all the time is we would put our students on one leg and then we would handle medicine balls and have them move medicine balls around so we could build that stability. Another way that you're doing that when you're doing planks is building up your core. 
when you build up your core, it helps stabilize your whole body and balance. So these are all fantastic things that you need to be doing for your body so your body is prepared. Now let's consider the mind. As far as the mind is concerned, it's almost like playing a game of chess with yourself because your mind really wants to start playing tricks on you in a survival situation. And one of the ways that we do this is we can learn from, for example, soldiers. Soldiers have a very particular way. They have to do a lot of stuff that's not fun at all. Not very fun at all. They have to sleep in terrible places. They have to go to battle. They have to eat terrible food all the time. There's these things that soldiers have to do. And one of the things that they say, and this is somewhat funny, is embrace the suck. And what I mean by that is that sort of thing sucks. And what you have to do is instead of going, all right, that sucks and I don't want to deal with it, you've got to be okay with embracing the suck. Yeah, the sleeping situation is bad, but I'm going to be okay with that. Yeah, the food is terrible, but it's giving me nutrition. This is very important. And you'll see this a lot in military personnel talking about embrace the suck. It's very valuable. I've used it a lot. One of the things that I did many times is I've walked out into an area like this and just laid down on the ground and went to sleep. Bugs on me, critters crawling all over me, and just stayed asleep because I embraced the suck. One of the things that I love to tell our students when they come to class is, it's just a thing. It's just a thing. So if one of those bad things happens to you and you don't like it, let's say, for example, that you're building a fire and you've worked really hard to get this fire going, and then all of a sudden it starts to rain and it puts it out. It's just a thing. If you allow your emotions to take control of you, then once that happens, you cannot make good critical decisions. You can't think clearly. So the best thing to do is find a rational, simple way to look at problems and be okay with it. It's just a thing. If the fire gets put out by the rain, it's just a thing. If you went fishing and you didn't catch anything, it's just a thing. If you're caught outside and you didn't expect to be outside at night, you don't have any supplies, it's just a thing. It's just a thing, you all. Just deal with it. It's going to be okay. Embrace the suck. It's just a thing. I've got one more for you. Hey, success. Success. Yeah. Success doesn't find you. You've got to go find success. If you sit and wait and consider your misery and focus upon the negativity of a situation, then you're probably going to be stuck right there and you're probably going to die. You've got to get out of that sort of loop in your head. You must go out and find success. Now, that means right here in your head. That doesn't mean we necessarily have to get up and move around. One of the best things that we can do if we find ourselves lost when we know a search and rescue team is going to find us is to sit down. But what happens when we sit down is we get scared or we get concerned, we have fear, we're hungry, we're thirsty, all these things that happen to us, and we stay right here and we don't have success. We get upset. These things happen to us mentally. And one of the best things that we can do is focus on success in our mind. Hey, I made it another hour. I'm okay. Or it might come down to something like this. I've sat here for another minute and I'm okay and then just survive for one more minute, and then one more minute after that. Whatever it takes, you will determine where and when you find success right here in your own head. Work for it. It's not gonna be easy in a survival situation, but you can do it. Come on, join in. Let's learn together.